Hi everyone, it's Kylie from Paint Wing. In today's video, I'll be painting some autumn themed pieces of watercolors. The paintings will be inspired by some pumpkins, gourds, and corn that I recently got to decorate my front porch. I'll be starting off by painting this corn here. The husk on the corn is a really pretty purple color. I'll be mixing together some purples and magentas with these three colors. I have a fresh palette I'll be using to mix the colors together. First here is Silo Blue, and then I'll mix it with this rose shade. It's creating a nice purple here. For the initial layer on the husk, I'll be using a wet on wet technique, meaning I'll first apply water to the husk and then dropping pigment into the water. I'll be adding a variety of purple and magenta shades. I'll also be adding a small hint of yellow ochre to the tip of the husk. In order to create texture in the wash, I'm adding extra water to the wash while it's still wet. I'm just going to continue filling in the husk skin. I'm using a brush with a nice tip on it to help me paint within the areas over here. Now while the wash is lightly damp, I'm going to load up my brush with some more magenta paint and create delicate lines. For some of the tighter areas, it's easier to switch to a wet on dry technique. Having extra water on the paper can make it more difficult to control your paint. Now I'll be creating a wash of yellow and reds. I'm mixing these colors together to get shades of yellow, orange, and red. So here are some of the colors I'll be using. Let's start off a light thin wash of water and start dabbing color into it. I'm starting off with some yellow and then a burgundy red color.
After the wash dries, start adding details with a fine small brush. I'm using a wet on dry technique to add wet paint to dry paper. I'm using pretty saturated amount of paint to get bold thin lines. You'll notice that using this technique creates more sharp and defined marks versus the wet on wet technique. For the husk, I'll continue creating these thin lines. To blend some of the marks into the first wash, I'll dip a medium round brush into water and blend it into it. Now that I think the husk looks good, I'll be painting the individual corn pieces. This harvest corn has a variety of colors. I'm not exactly following how the corn I have looks, just mainly using it for inspiration. I'm switching back and forth between the different colors on my palette. And I'm filling some of these in. Now lastly, I'll be painting out a drop shadow. I'm using blue paint for the shadow. I'm just looking at the corn sitting on my counter to see how the shadow looks. And here's the final painting after I completed everything. This piece took me about 90 minutes to 2 hours to paint. This took the longest of all the paintings I created because of all the fine details. Next I'll be painting a gourd. Again I'll start with a wet on wet technique to start filling in the gourd. I'm using very diluted paint to the space layer. For colors I'm using a teal color I mixed up and then also a pinkish peach color. I did not write down what colors and exact mixtures I used for these paintings. They were just meant to be examples for an upcoming workshop I'm doing. Once things dry, I'll be painting out the fine details, sort of like I did for the corn. The great thing about these objects is that the shapes are pretty organic and they don't need to be perfect. The gourd is mostly white here, but I'm painting the light beige pink instead because I think it'd be really pretty.
Now over here, I'll be adding green and yellow details. I'm starting with green and then I'll transition into yellow. I'm going to blend the two colors together by moving my brush back and forth. I'm creating some small details with my brush. And I'm just going to continue creating small details. And like the last piece, I'll create a blue shadow. This one I might abstract a little by adding extra water. And here's my final gourd and the one I use for inspiration. Lastly, I'll be painting a teal pumpkin. Like the other two pieces, I'll be starting with a wet on wet wash. I'm using a slightly larger brush to fill in the pumpkin cooker. I'm adding a few different shades of green and teal that I've mixed up together. Using a wet on wet technique, you can also create the lines on the pumpkin. To create lines like this, you don't want the wash to be too wet or they'll dissipate. Now I'm going to blow dry the piece to dry it. After things are dry, I'm painting out the stem. And some darker lines for contrast. Next I'll start painting the details of my pumpkin using a wet on dry technique.
For this piece, I'll be creating an even looser shadow slash background with blue and brown paint. And here are the final results of my paintings. Thank you so much for watching. I don't have a full tutorial for these, but I will put drawing templates on Patreon for paid members if you'd like to follow along. Other than that, I hope you get rest of your day. Bye now.